Okay, so we were still in the differential equations chapter, and we were looking at linear homogeneous at linear homogeneous differential equations with constant coefficients, and what we were going to look at was solving one where you need to uh, find complex roots, which sometimes people can't remember how to do. So let's do that. Where was it? Here we go. Okay, so the fifth derivative of y plus 32y equals 0. Okay, so the auxiliary polynomial is clearly going to be lambda to the 5 minus 30, oh, sorry, plus 32 equals 0. Okay, so that means lambda to the 5 equals minus 32. Now, such a thing will have five complex roots. Uh, so, since complex roots come in pairs, one of them will have to be real. It'll be the actual fifth root of 32, of minus 32. It'll be the, the normal one. So it'll be 2, minus 2, sorry. And the other four roots will be complex, and there'll be like two conjugate pairs. And if you look at them on a diagram, they'll look like, uh, they'll look something like this. They'll be spaced, one will be here at, oh, no, not there, sorry. One will be here at minus 2 and the others will be spaced evenly around this circle of radius 2. Okay, so there'll be one there, one there, one there, one there. Okay, so if you wanted to, you actually could jump right in and just do this, like this, with this circle. Uh, so let me just draw a little bit bigger. So this is, because this is a nice easy one, uh, where we're just finding the fifth roots of things. So minus 2 is one of them, because 2 to the minus 2 to the 5 is minus 32. Then I'm saying that the other 2 will need to be evenly spaced around this thing. So 2 pi is the whole angle around the circle, so each of these angles must be 2 pi over 5. Okay? So that's 2 pi over 5. This angle here is 2 pi over 5. Wait a second, one, two, three, four, five, yes. The angle there is two pi over five, that's two pi over five, that's two pi over five. I didn't mean the angle there, I meant this whole, sorry. Uh, I didn't mean the angle, uh. oh, damn it. This whole angle here is two pi over five. Okay, so there's five angles of two pi over five add up to add up 2, 2 pi, and then we know that one of the roots is minus 2, so it's there on the negative thing. So we can figure out the other ones. Um, so that whole angle is 2 pi over 5, and the things are evenly arranged. That means that this, this angle here must be pi over 5, right? Okay, so that means that this root over here, if we want to write out its real and imaginary parts, it'll be... It'll be... Um, so its magnitude is 2, okay? And then we have we have cosine pi over 5 is the real part, and then the imaginary part is sine pi over 5. Okay? Uh, then it's, then the other, we have, a comp, we have the, the conjugate of that, so we also have a minus, plus minus, that's this one over here. Then we want this one over here, so that's got that's that's now two pi over five from the from the x ax from the x axis, but it's like back there. So it's going to be again we have the two. The size of this thing is two, and then we're going to have minus what? So we're going to have minus cos pi minus cosine two pi over five, right? Okay. Minus uh, minus cosine two pi over five, and then we're going to have still plus i sine of two pi over five, right? Yeah, uh, and actually plus minus of this because you also have the complex conjugate of that. So those are the four roots. Minus two, and then these two complex things. Okay. 
So now we need to write down from this the actual solutions. So we're going to have, so one of the solutions, the most simple one, will correspond to the, um, the lambda equals minus 2. And then that solution will just be e to the minus 2, the variable is x, right? So e to the minus 2x. OK, so that's this factor here. Then the next one will be, so you need e. So now let's look at, let's look at the solutions that correspond to this thing. So there can be two solutions for that. So one of them involves the real part of that root. So that's 2, oh, sorry. That's 2 cos pi over 5, OK, times by x. Uh, how can I put that? 2 cos pi over 5, um, let's see. Let me put it like this. 2x cos pi over 5, OK? So that constant is 2 cos pi over 5 times by the x, OK? Then it needs to be times by a cosine. Oh, sorry. Cosine. And the cosine must be a cosine of what? It must be a cosine of the, this part, the imaginary part, cosine of times by x. x times sine of pi over 5. OK? So that's to be this part, I think. Oh, sorry, it's 2, isn't it? There's a 2 there. It's the, so, sorry. So we're actually going to have 2x sine pi over 5. And you don't put the imaginary, don't put i there. OK, so that should be this part. So we have e to the 2cx, and they need to find c to be cos pi over 5. Yes, so we have the same thing. Then it's cos 2 times sx, and they've said that s is the sine pi over 5. Yes, so we have exactly the same thing there. Uh, then the next one is corresponding to, again, still corresponding to this, to the because uh, there's two ones for this, because it's it's uh, multiple, it's got, you know, it's two two roots there, conjugate to each other. You have the same real part, but now you have a sign and then the same argument to it. Okay, that corresponds to that part. Of course, the order doesn't matter. You put this one first, this one third, whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then the next parts, we're going to have, we're going to have, uh, now we're looking at using this bit, the, the roots that correspond to that. So we're going to have y, uh, y, okay, well, yes, we're going to have y, of course, and then we're going to have to e, and now we want the real part of that, which is minus 2, I will put the x in here, uh, cos 2 pi over 5. Ooh. Okay, times by, then cosine, and now we have the imaginary part, so times by an x. Okay, that should correspond to one of these two things, uh, this one because there's a cos there. So we have two, okay, so they've used A of S times C here, so they've used some trig identity, which I'm not going to bother to verify. Um, and here again, they've used some trig identity, which I'm not going to bother to verify. So this one is fine. And the final solution, the fifth one, fifth linear independence thing will be you have the same real part, of course. OK. And then now you have sine of, and then the same argument to it. OK. Wait, not this. Yes, the same argument to it. OK. Uh, so that's it. Uh, so you take, the, you take the linear combination of those five solutions, and that gives you the solution. Uh, so I solve this sort of, I solve the, um, I solve the, complex equation, the, the complex polynomial lambda to the 5 equals minus 32, I solved that in this version. I solved that here by um, drawing a diagram, right? And if that doesn't satisfy you, or I think there might be questions where such a thing doesn't work. I can't really remember, but maybe you'll get questions where it doesn't work. Uh, let's do, let's, let me show you how to do it. Well, let's, remember, let's recall how to do it. Um, I think you've done this before, last year, how to do that without using a diagram. So, it's pretty algebraically. So you have lambda to the 5 equals minus 32. So we've got the magnitude of this thing is 32, right? 
uh, 32 is 2 to the 5, so let's put that as 2 to the 5. Okay. Now we have uh, the complex, the, sorry, the, the arguments, right? So 2 to the 5 is magnitude, and then this e to the thing, e to the i something is going to tell us sort of what angle this minus 32 makes to the positive x-axis. And of course, it equals the angle of minus, of minus pi, of pi over 2, right? Because it's, if you think about the diagram, it's, it's here, that minus 32 is in this direction. Sorry. Minus 32 is in that direction. Okay. So that's an angle of, not pi over 2, sorry, of pi, of, 90 degree, of 180 degrees pi. Okay. So we have i pi. Okay. But you could also get, that, get to that same place by going around twice or three times or once backwards, whatever, by any multiple of 2 pi n, right? Where n is some integer, any integer. Okay, so that's, so this, so this now, this is minus 32 written in modulus argument form. This is the modulus or the magnitude of the number, it's also positive, and this is the argument, and it always involves a, a bit, a plus 2 pi n bit, because the argument is ambiguous. The argument can be, to, to specify an angle, you don't have to, you, you only specify it up to 360 degrees or up to 2 pi. Okay, up to one's round. Okay, so now we want to find lambda, so we just take the fifth root of each side. Okay, so in other words, we times, we put each side to the one over five. So if you do that, you're going to get lambda equals, so two to, two to the five to the one over five is of course two. And now you have e to the i pi over 5 plus 2 over 5 pi, n, right? Okay. Now, by letting n be different numbers, different integers, we can get all the solutions. So the first one maybe is, let's try, let's call them by the thing. Let's, let's, get, let's get lambda 0. So that's where n equals 0. You don't have to call it this, I'm just calling it this. So lambda 0 will be where n equals 0, so it'll be 2e to the i pi 5, OK? Um, lambda 1 will be 2e to the i, and you're going to have 3 pi 5, OK? Lambda 2, where n equals 2, that'll be 2e, and now you're going to have pi over 5 plus 4 pi over 5, I, 4 pi over 5, okay? Um, now, let me say, I need two more, but let me not do lambda 3 and 4, let me just do, let me rather do um, lambda minus 1. That's going to be, it can be any five integers that are next to each other. So lambda minus 1 is, 2e to the minus i pi over 5. So clearly that's the conjugate of 2e to the i pi over 5, right? Because its argument is the difference between lambda naught and lambda 1 is just that here the argument is positive and here the argument is negative. And the argument, and when you flip the sign of the argument, that makes it, it gives you the conjugate, right? Okay, because, the, yeah. Okay. Instead of, instead of going around, instead of going up, you cut. If they're going up around the circle, you come down around the circle, the same distance. So you're just on the opposite sides of the of the x-axis, so it's equivalent to flipping the sign of the imaginary part to taking the conjugate. And we're also going to have lambda minus 2. Uh, so that's going to be 2e, and now we're going to have 2 times minus 2, so that's like minus 4, so we're going to get... Oh, sorry. We're going to get... Um, Minus i three pi over five. So that's the that's the 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 complex part of that. Oh, and I've made a mistake. This is not four pi over five. It's obviously this is obviously it's, it's four pi over five plus pi over five. It's five pi over five. Five pi over five is just pi, of course. Okay. So now I have these things right, but remember that when I want to write down the solutions to the differential equation, I actually need them in the form a plus b i, right, where a and b are real numbers. I need them, this, now I've, I've, I've converted this, oh, sorry, I converted this into modulus argument form so that I could fifth root it and get the answers, the, answers, the fifth roots in modulus argument form. 
but now I need to convert all the modulus argument form things back into real imaginary part form. So let's do that. Okay, so this one is the easiest, lambda 2. That's e to the minus pi, 2, it's, so the magnitude is 2, but then pi, the angle, is that's just, that's what we, actually, what we had originally, it's, it's halfway round, so you have, this is minus 2. Um, e to the pi of a 5. Uh, so now I'm thinking about this one. So the angle is pi over 5, right? So the magnitude is 2, the angle is pi over 5, so that means we're just going to have cos pi over 5 plus i sine pi over 5. Okay? Now let's do... Oh, uh, then of course lambda minus 1 was the conjugate of that, so it's just... The cos stays the same because cos of minus pi over 5 is the same as cos of pi over 5. And the i, the, the sine flips sine because sine of minus something is the same as minus sine of the thing. Sine is the odd function, whereas cos is an even function. And that, that is indeed the conjugate of that. Uh, lambda minus 1 is the conjugate of lambda naught. And then we're going to have lambda 1. So that's the magnitude of 2. And now we're going to have cosine of 3 pi over 5 um, plus i sine 3 pi over 5, okay, and we're going to have lambda minus 2, 2, now the conjugate of that, oh, cosine 3 pi over 5 minus i sine 3 pi over 5, okay, and up to some trig identities, this is going to, this will, these are the same as what we got before, and it's the same as what they have, what they have. It, there's just trig identities, you know, trig identities can convert the one form to the other, but this is fine. Now you can write down the solutions using, using this as the this is the real part, and this is this two times that is the imaginary part of each solution. Okay, and I think that's it. Yes.